welcome back to the Project Return Online Classroom. I'm Miss Celia, and today I wanted to equip you with the knowledge that you definitely need to be safe when you go on the computer or use the internet. Today we're going to be talking about phishing, which is scamming. The internet can provide us a wealth of information about a lot of different topics. It can be very useful for when we're researching stuff that we're interested in, or trying to find inspiration for our art, or talking to people and our loved ones and our kids online. However, not everybody online has pure intentions like you might. People want to get personal information from you online because they want to take advantage of you. When people try to do this, it's called phishing with a PH. Phishing is an online scam where people attempt to get sensitive information from you by pretending that they are somebody they are not. They usually go after information like your usernames and passwords, your banking or financial information, or government documents like your ID or your social security number or any other identifying documents so they can pretend to be you. People that are targeted commonly in these scams tend to be children, older adults and the elderly, and people with severe mental illness as they are seen as easy targets to these people online. So that is why it is very important for us to be aware of these things being out there and what we can do to keep ourselves safe when we're on the computer. There's many types of phishing, and I'm gonna go through a few different kinds um, and how you can spot what might look like a scam online. The first kind that I want to talk about is called catfishing. And catfishing is when people go online, pretend that they're someone they're not in order to get that sensitive information from you. They may email you regularly, have fake profiles on social media or dating sites in order to get close to you and gain your trust. You can usually spot a catfish because there are some telltale signs. For example, catfish profiles seem suspicious. They usually don't have a lot of photos on them. And while you're speaking to them, it may seem like the relationship progresses very quickly or they're heavy with the flattering to try to get on your good side. They never seem to meet you in person or want to speak via video chat in any way. And their stories oftentimes can seem too good to be true, or there's too many inconsistencies or things that don't seem to add up. Also, they may ask you for money or revealing photos. And I just want to stress the point that if somebody asks you for any adult content or, re or revealing photos online, you do not have to give anybody that type of content. When it doesn't feel right, say no. So I'm including a picture of a profile on Facebook. I want you to look at this profile and see if it feels legitimate or not. If so, this person were to add you and try to talk to you on Facebook, do you think that you would try and converse with them? Or do you think they look a little bit suspicious? Why do they look suspicious? So this profile is a catfish profile, and there's a few reasons that we can tell. First of all, if you look towards the center top, you'll notice that this individual does not have many photos. All that seems to be posted is his profile picture and two more photos that don't show his face. Looking further down his feed, you can see that all of the posts on his wall are made from over seven years ago, seven years ago or more. So this isn't an active profile. To the left, you can see his roommates. Those roommates have very generic names and the pictures are from Google Images, so those profiles are likely fake as well. And then to the right where it says you and Joey, that'll show what kind of posts you and this person have in common and there's nothing to see here, which means that you have nothing in common, no friends in common or photos. So this is a fake profile. There's also SMS phishing or text message phishing. And this type of phishing is when scammers will text you into try to bait you into sharing that personal information. They may pretend to be someone they're not, they may pretend to be a bank or a website that you just subscribed to, or they may threaten you and tell you that you owe this amount of money or that your personal information is online and you need to give me your credit card information in order to make it stop. If you don't recognize who it comes from, don't click on any links don't give them any private information. You can spot SMS phishing in your text if you don't recognize the number that the text was sent from. 
if you don't recognize the company that the text claims to be from, the link that they link you to in the text message looks suspicious or goes to a website that you don't recognize. And again, you never click the link, a link that you do not recognize. And also there may be a lot of spelling and grammatical errors in the message or random symbols that seemingly don't belong there. So this is a message that many of us have probably seen before. Somebody telling us that we've won a prize or all we have to do is click yes and we'll win a thousand dollars. Do we think that this is real? Is this phishing? What makes you think that this text is phishing? There's a few ways that we can tell that this is phishing. For example, it doesn't tell us who the sender is. It's just an unknown number. Second, it's telling us that we've been selected for a free Best Buy gift card. But did we enter a contest to win a Best Buy gift card? How did they get our number? How did they know that we even shop at Best Buy? Not to mention that they even spelled the word Best Buy wrong. Moving further down, it says only 43 left. This conveys a sense of urgency. And then they follow it up by the word text. Text is then spelled incorrectly. Using what we learned about the last SMS message, do we think this one is a scam as well? Does it look suspicious? What makes this look a little bit funny? There's a lot about this text that looks a bit weird, but the two biggest things are the first line and the link. The first line has no gr grammar, no capitalization, and barely addresses you as an individual. It tells you you have free Bitcoin waiting, but did you even sign up for Bitcoin? And then below that, it says claim now, which again, that sense of urgency. And then it includes a very suspicious looking link at the end. Do not click this link because we don't know what kind of website it's going to lead us to. Voice phishing is a common type of phishing as well. This is when somebody will pick up the phone and call you and pretend to be somebody else. Uh, they may pretend to be your phone or internet provider, a bank, a debt collector, usually claiming, usually these types of scams claim that you owe money and you need to pay them. Uh, or they request personal information like a social security number, your birthday, or credit card information. So the common scam that's been going around for a few years is that somebody will call you and claim that they are a representative of the IRS and that you owe back pay in taxes and that if you don't pay that money in taxes, you're going to go to jail. This is a very open and vague threat. That's not true. So you don't have to give them any money or anything. Don't let people take advantage of you. Ways to spot voice phishing. Common phishing scams include claims that your bank or credit card is compromised, claims that your insurance, disability, or social security payments have an issue and you're no longer eligible to receive them unless you make a payment or provide information over the phone, claims that you owe money to the IRS, or unsolicited loan and investment offers. When you get a call and you're unsure if it's a legitimate call or if it's a scam call, when you're threatened on the phone, you can always request them to provide you more information about the account, the claim, or where the fraudulent charge came from. Always ask for them to provide you more information. Request that all information and communication continue via mail only. That way, if it is actually a legitimate claim, you do have it in writing. So these places that call you for scams would not be able to communicate with you via mail unless you give them your address. So if you don't give them any information and tell them that if they're legitimate, they'll contact you through the mail only, not only will you have it in writing, you won't be divulging any personal information. You can also search the phone number on the internet to see if others have reported the phone number as a scam or you can ask around, ask somebody that you're close with to see if this sounds legitimate. And finally, never pay anything or provide personal information to anybody over the phone unless you can 100% verify that who you're talking to is legitimate. If it is a legitimate claim, they, they can request that information via mail and it will be much more secure that way. And then finally, we have email phishing. 
Email phishing is very similar to SMS phishing in the sense that it's a text, but it's sent through the email instead of onto your phone. Uh, so there are your email phishing oftentimes can look a little bit off, but they oftentimes can look very legitimate or very professional. Uh, they usually contain suspicious links that can make your computer vulnerable to viruses, or they have vague threats that your account will be shut down or that you're going to owe money and stuff like that that seemingly just don't make any sense. Ways to spot email phishing. You don't recognize the name of the individual or the email that has messaged you or it doesn't look like a legitimate corporate email. You don't recognize the company they claim to be from if it doesn't seem like a legitimate bank, for example, if it's a trusted bank rather than Chase Bank. Trusted bank is a little suspicious. The email threatening you in some way doesn't include any personal account information. So they may say that your account has been compromised but they don't provide you an account number, they don't provide you any information or identifying information to let you know what the account they're referring to is. They may be threatening you with a, your account being deleted, that they'll fee or sue you or that you may be arrested or penalized if you don't comply with them and do not fall for these tricks. The email that has been sent to you has suspicious links, and again, never click or respond to a suspicious link or email. And the email has grammatical or spelling errors. What you can do in the case that you get a threatening phishing email from your bank, for example, if the email claims to be from your bank, call them. See if there's an issue with your account. Let them know that you got this email and that you just want to verify if it's true or not. You can search the email online to see if it's been previously reported as a spam, and you can always, always, always delete emails that look suspicious when you get them. So going on that banking scam that I was mentioning earlier, here's an example of a phishing email from Trusted Bank. Uh, let me know what you think about this doesn't look very secure or doesn't look very legitimate. So there's a few things in this email that are suspicious. For example, Trusted Bank is not a legitimate bank. It's not a real name. It's their way of telling you that they're not real and they're just trying to make you feel like you can <laughs> trust them, for lack of a better term. Also, when they address you in the email, it does not use your name whatsoever or any account information. It just says, Dear Valued Customer of Trusted Bank. Very non-specific, very general, not directed towards you. They probably sent this to hundreds of people. And then moving forward, if you read the email, it tells you that you tried to withdraw money while you were out of the country. But did you even go out of the country? Does this even make sense? And then moving down lower in the email, it provides, again, a link that seems a little bit suspicious. Trustedbank.com doesn't seem like a legitimate source because Trusted Bank is not a legitimate bank. Here's another phishing email from what appears to be Netflix. They're telling you that your payment's been declined, you need to re-update your payment information, and they're requesting your full card information, including expiration date and security code. Does this look real? So of course, this is a scam email and there's many ways that we can figure that out. For example, the from subject all the way at the top says from Netflix, but in parentheses, you can see that there is a long series of symbols and letters and numbers and it's not from a Netflix customer service email. So that tells us this is another company or another person disguising themselves as Netflix to get this information from you. Now, it's asking you for very specific information about your Amex card. How do they know you have an Amex card? Do you even have an Amex card? They're asking you for very specific information and creating a sense of urgency. They're asking you for your expiration date, your security code, and your card numbers. So they're asking you for a lot of information. And then as we go further down, you can see it says from your friends at Netflix. That's not how Netflix signs their emails. So we know this is a scam. 
And here is another example. Based on the information that we have learned in the past few examples about scam emails, what do we think makes this email suspicious and illegitimate? So there's quite a bit that makes this email look suspicious. First, when they address you, they call you congratulations amazon.com user. They don't use your account username, they don't use your personal name, they don't use any identifying information to identify you, so it's probably not legitimate. Moving further down, it says this gift is only for users in the United States. That conveys exclusivity, saying that you are specially chosen and that if you want your specially chosen gift, you have to give me this information. Now, moving further down, where it says you can choose a $1,000 Amazon gift card, Apple iPhone, or Samsung Galaxy. Did you enter in a contest to win any of those? And even if you did enter in that contest, doesn't it seem too good to be true? You've been randomly selected to win $1,000 or an iPhone. It seems too good to be true. Further down, it tells you you have a minute and some change to enter the contest and enter your information to gain your prize. Again, creating that sense of urgency. There's a lot of information that I provided you in this video, but this is stuff that's very important for us to know when we are browsing on the internet because we want to make ourselves as safe as possible, even online. Our personal information, our banking, our banking stuff, and our government documents and identification is sensitive and you don't share that with anybody unless like a family member and you absolutely trust them. Don't reveal any personal information online. Any correspondence with personal information can always be done through mail or in person. I hope I was able to give you guys a little bit of context for phishing and what it is that people are looking for to get out of you and I hope that you take the precautions you need to take to be safe online while browsing. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.